All right, Javas, welcome to week four of CIT 111, Introduction to Programming Java. The um, agenda of this video is to give you an overview of the week. We'll talk then a bit about how the modules will be structured moving forward so that you have a broader picture of that. Next, we'll look at two different programming and learning tools that we'll be using throughout the remainder of the course. We'll be uploading code that we program to GitHub, which is called a version control system. And finally, I will tell you about Slack, which is a, a discussion forum, chat room style environment designed for tech teams and in a professional context. Finally, I'll give you a preview of what's coming up in terms of grading. All right, with that, let's jump in. By way of roadmap, let's review where we've come from. We started out Java CIT 111 by setting up NetBeans. Let's pull up NetBeans here on the screen. So remember, NetBeans is not Java. NetBeans is a container that allows us to get source code to the Java compiler and then receive its output. We learned how to make packages and uh, projects that house those packages and class files, .java files, that contain the actual Java code that we run in the compiler. With that set up, we were able to then dig into the nitty gritty of how is Java structured. Remember our key components of Java's structure are classes which define objects which we'll learn about and then methods inside of those. We can think of classes and the objects that they define as having things that they know and things that they do. So things they know are stored in member variables and things they do are encapsulated in methods. So language structure we can summarize as classes and methods. And that's it. The fun thing about Java is there are no exceptions. English is a difficult language to learn, I hear, because there are lots of exceptions to rules. Pronunciation rules, spelling rules. We have words that mean exactly, or spelled exactly the same, that mean incredibly different things. Like the word lead can also be lead. Very different. The metal versus a verb. Java doesn't have exceptions to its structure rule. So when we learn about classes and methods, that's knowledge that will be with us and it's not going to change. Next, we looked at, well, what do we do in these classes and methods? Well, what do we store? We store data and variables. What do methods do? They, uh, they do things with those variables. Last week, we dug into the specifics of using operators to manipulate the value in those variables. We had a preview of how we control those operations with logic, such as if statements. This week, we are digging into how do we use the if control structures in Java combined with mechanisms for getting data from the user to actually implement some pretty cool solutions to some small problems. That's our overview of the week. Let's look online at technologyrediscovery.net for a sense of structure so you see where this is going. We are here on the CIT 111 weekly lesson guide that we're also familiar with. We can jump down to our current week number four, which will be a good example. S there's nothing uh, particularly new about this other than I want to point out that in general, we will have online resources that come from Oracle tutorials, the Java documentation, which we'll learn about in depth about halfway through the course, and then references to our textbook. The lesson sequences usually will be jumping you from that weekly guide into the module uh, guides that are actually where the content lives. So this week we are working through module four, and if we jump back to home for a second, you can see we are finishing up what I call chunk one language core. I call chunks uh, the same things that other teachers call units. I think uh, chunk is a little bit more it gives us a sense of building something. So we'll be jumping into module four, if uh, control, and getting user input. Finally, each week moving forward, you will be asked to write code and share that code on the GitHub repository. And this week, after you have completed chunk one, module four, I will ask you number three under products to follow this detailed guide to set up your GitHub account. GitHub you can think of as a online cloud directory for computer code. 
An interesting thing about it is it's designed for code, so it includes features such as searching the entire GitHub uh, ecosystem for code of a particular language. So it's a uh, programming specific uh, sharing cloud drive. More importantly, it also helps programmers control the evolution of a program. We call that version control. And I will post a video about the second exercise in setting up GitHub, which involves finding the source code file on your computer and then telling GitHub where it is so we can upload it as a single Java file. Step five of this week's products to produce is a link to a Google spreadsheet. The name of this spreadsheet is the Weekly Product Project Upload Index. When you pull this up, you'll see basically links to code that's been posted on GitHub. This allows you to share what you've written with me and other students. It also allows us to maintain some structure. We can't email code, shouldn't email code, because it's not a medium designed for sharing computer language. The GitHub system will have nicely formatted code. It knows how Java is put together, so there's even color coding of the, the syntactical elements of Java. And it also allows us to create a record of the work that you're doing. I'll uh, finally say that with GitHub, I'll uh, jump to our course GitHub here on Technology Rediscovery Home. You'll notice that the first link under cross-module resources is my GitHub account for the entire course. You'll see the packages that our code is organized into and the uh, sub-packages in many cases. When you go to apply for jobs, even if they aren't programming jobs, it's very common to include the name of your GitHub account or your GitHub user. This allows people who are looking to understand your skill levels to review the code that you've actually written. This is a relatively uncommon piece of, um, of personal data to share during an interview. And I encourage you to think about the GitHub uh, repository that you're creating as professional output. So when we're uploading code, ask, would I be comfortable with my potential future employer seeing this code? That doesn't mean it has to be advanced or even correct, but it should be neat and clean. It should be commented. It should have your name at the top. It should have a license header. These are all things that we'll work on in the course. I know you're new, but I want to give you a context of why we're using this tool. So the next item on our agenda is the Slack tool. Let me pull Slack up to show you what this is. Slack is designed for professional collaboration. It was made by people working in the tech industry. It allows us to have an ongoing discussion forum. You can post links and images. It's like a chat discussion help board all rolled into one. It is an invite only system and you have all received an email for the email account registered with the community college to join Slack. I suspect, since I've been teaching here for a little while, that many of you do not have that email address forwarded to an account that you check most regularly. I'm going to encourage you to follow the guide that I put together to forward your academic email to a personal email account. This will not only help you get Slack notices if you choose to get them, but it'll help you not miss emails for, from all sorts of other classes. As just a side note, since it's not officially Java, you'll see that on Technology Rediscovery, the uh, third link down under cross-module resources, excuse me, the fourth link down on cross-module resources is forwarding your CCA email. It's a four-step process. It takes about three minutes, and it will allow you to get those notices without having to check two email accounts. And finally, our last item on our overview of the week video is grades. Midterm grades are coming up, and I will be uh, giving you instructions for how I'd like you to uh, think about those. The simple answer is I will ask you to look re at our grading guide again that I introduced at the very beginning of the course. That's found under teaching and then the self-grading guide. I will ask you to submit to me a note card with a suggestion that you make about a fair grade for the course. I will ask you on that note card to give evidence of why your proposed grade is fair and then I will review those and submit midterm grades. I say that to remind you that this is not a point-based system. 
Some of you are coming into Java with extremely limited programming experience. Some of you are actually working in the tech field and have worked around programmers, or some of you have even programmed different languages. So your skill level is going to be much higher. There isn't a good way to unify the grading criteria for all of you. That's just not a reality that we have here in our course. And so because of that, I will be using your individual assessment that takes into account how much learning, how much growth your, uh, is occurring in this course to base my uh, grade decisions. And I'll give you more information on that coming up next week. So uh, I will ask you to return to our overview of the week and jump into module four, user input and if blocks. You'll see at the top of that, and as we go through those exercises, I will be walking you through the technical side of this week's content. So with that, thank you very much, and enjoy week four.